I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I trust that you have been enjoying yourself this week with your technology. I certainly have been with mine. As usual, you know, I always just love to play with technology. What can I say? Speaking of technology, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Now, for those of you that have been wondering, ponder, what is a computer curmudgeon? Well, a curmudgeon is an opinionated old dude. Ha ha! And I happen to be opinionated about computers. And I'm not old. I just have gray hair. <laughs> it's one of those genetic things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I also have some land to sell you in Florida. But anyway, <laughs> never mind. The point is, we have some cool stuff to talk about this week on the netcast. Now, by the way, I don't normally mention this, but I will this time. And that is this. You can get this netcast all over the interwebs. You can go to YouTube, to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash D-R-B-I-L-L-B-A-I-L-E-Y. Dr. Bill Bailey. That's me. And you can get it on our website, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C. Or, should you desire, you can also go to Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L dot TV. You can also go to Vimeo. That's vimeo.com slash Dr. Bill. Uh, you can go to blip.tv slash Dr. Bill. You can go all over the place. It's, we're just everywhere. Look, I'm, we're just everywhere. What can I say? We're also on Blueberry, Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y dot com and techpodcast.com, as I mentioned previously. And on iTunes. Anyway, you know, it's like every time I stop and think about it, we're somewhere else. <laughs> we're just everywhere. So, tell your friends, <laughs> share the joy and excitement of Dr. Bill throughout the universe, and it'll just make the world a happier place. What can I say? Okay, so, I want to tell you about a lot of things this week, and I'm really excited. I know you think this is silly, perhaps even crazy, but I am really excited about our new sponsor. Our new sponsor starting this week is Mozy Pro, M-O-Z-Y dot com slash pro. I'm gonna put it right up here on the screen. And if you will use the special code that I'm gonna give you here in just a few moments, you will get 15% off your Mozy Pro subscription. Now, here's the thing about Mozy Pro. Mozy Pro is a tool over the internet that allows you to back up your data. You know, there's a saying among system administrators, you're only as good as your last backup. And that is 100% true because hard drives are going to fail. Matter of fact, Mozy Pro has documented that there are 140,000, think about this, 140,000 hard drive failures every day. Not every week, not every month, not every year, every day. Oh man. So you need to back up your data. I mean, think about it. If you lost all your family photos, all your videos, all your drbill.tv downloaded videos, <laughs> what would you do? You would cry. Mm, yes. And you would be, you know, right to do so because it'd be a tragedy. Now here's the thing, with Mosey Pro you set it up, you point it to your directory that you want to back up and it backs it up to the cloud automatically. You don't have to think about it, you don't have to do anything. And should you actually lose your hard drive, you just download your files to your new one once you get it set up. How awesome is that? Now remember I said 
15% off. This is not an insignificant offer. So I would encourage you to take advantage of it. Go to the URL that I showed you earlier, which is mosey.com slash pro, and enter this code. Are you ready? Podcast15. Podcast15 for 15% off. Dude, I'm telling you, take advantage of this special offer, okay? It will benefit you greatly. I mean... Really, I can't talk enough about backing up your files. You must back up your files, okay? And this is the best way to do it. And I've discovered as I went to Mosey Pro's site to do some research on it and so forth, they're owned now by EMC, the biggest, biggest manufacturer of storage area networks and disk systems that's out there. If they liked it enough, to purchase the company, which they did, then you know it is good because they know what they're doing when it comes to storage. That's the storage that we have at High Point Regional Health System is EMC storage. So, I was very impressed. Okay. So anyway, great offer. Take advantage of that. Now, I've got my web browser up over here on my computer and uh, I'm going to have to look over here to see, because I don't have my tablet with me, it's out in the car, to see what our next item is. Our next item is, will Verizon buy Netflix? Verizon is apparently thinking about it. They're pondering it. Ponder. Hmm. Pondering buying Netflix. Uh, in an effort to make its way into the video streaming DVD rental business and to give Netflix a boost as well. Netflix is apparently looking for someone to purchase it. They've had some issues since they raised their prices, which, okay, I understand that they raised their price in one sense, uh, because in a way they didn't, they just changed their pricing structure. They still have the streaming video service, which is what I'm a member of, for $8 a month, and they also have the uh, you can get the DVD in the mail, which I've never done, just never used it, uh, which is also like $8 a month or something. So basically, they split the services apart. So in that sense, yes, it was a price increase. For me, it wasn't because I just signed up for the streaming. I got the streaming. The price didn't go up. It's still the same. And I like the streaming. Uh, you know, me and my Roku box. Dude, I love my Roku box. So... It wasn't an increase for me, but it was perceived as one. And I guess for people that were using both services, it was like a doubling. But at any rate, the point is, they've had some cash issues <laughs> since then. People, you know, I think it was millions of people that left their service. Just out of sheer, we're not going to support this kind of attitude. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so they're looking for people to potentially buy them and have an injection of capital as business folk are wont to do. Okay. Next item, CentOS 6.1 is out. Now, CentOS Linux, CentOS, some people say, uh, because OS being operating system, is basically Red Hat Enterprise Linux, R-H-E-L, taking all the trademarking out, all the Red Hats out. See my, my Red Hat up there? little logo. Basically, if you took that hat and stripped the logo off of it, it'd just be a hat. <laughs> well, if you take the trademarks, the Red Hat trademarks, out of Red Hat Linux, it would just be Linux. But what CentOS does is they put their logos, I don't know if you call them trademarks because it's a nonprofit organization, open source, etc. They put their logo in it and they have CentOS or CentOS or whatever you want to call it, Linux. And this is 6.1, so it, it corresponds with uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.1. Now, Red Hat Enterprise Linux <coughs> has moved on to 6.2, so CentOS is still a version behind. Eh, what are you going to do? Takes them a while to strip those logos out, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but I use CentOS myself personally for my servers. Matter of fact, if you're watching this show streamed over the internet, it's doing so over 
a CentOS or CentOS server. Yes. So now it's running 5.7. I haven't upgraded to 6.1. I tend to let the upgrades kind of come after people have tried them. Know what I mean? <laughs> okay. All right, next item talking about updates. Microsoft will soon auto-update Internet Explorer on XP and in Windows 7. Now, what's that mean? You know those TV shows with the little guy at the end that says, what's that mean? What it means is they're not going to ask you. They're not going to get your permission. They're just going to upgrade Internet Explorer. The whole idea is to get rid of Internet Explorer version 6. Well, it's more than that, but that's one thing they definitely want to do. They want to get rid of all these old browsers that are sitting around that, frankly, are sorry. Okay? Sorry, Microsoft. It's true. Which is why you're trying to get everybody to move to 9. Okay? If you're on Windows 7. If you're on, on Windows XP, you can only go as high as 8. Because they want XP to die. <laughs> so, they're not going to create a IE9 for Windows XP. They want you to move off of XP and go to Windows 7. I mean, after all, Windows 8 is going to be out soon, so, you know, they got to get you to move on, folks. you you got to move on, if nothing else, for security reasons, which is why another reason, main reason, that they want to upgrade, update the Internet Explorer instances out there on the web is for security reasons. Now, here's the thing. There's some software that's web-based that won't run on Windows, uh, excuse me, on IE9 under Windows. So, there's a problem. If you're a corporate entity, you know, like where I work, and you have software that only runs under IE7 and 8, but won't run under IE9, you got a problem. So they have created a means, a way, that allows them to uh, defer the upgrades, the automatic upgrades. So you'll have to check that out, but be forewarned, it's coming very soon. They're going to force everybody else, all the regular humans out there, are going to get up updates whether they want it or not. Okay? So there. Microsoft wielding their power. Their evil power. <laughs> yes, well, okay. Zynga! <laughs> There's a company that just saying their name is fun. <laughs> Who knows if their games are any good, but their, their name sounds fun. Anyway, Zynga. <laughs> kind of reminds me of of the Big Bang Theory, with Sheldon going bazinga. So it's kind of like part of that, but not. It's not even spelled the same, but hey. Anyway, Zynga has a stock IPO fail. <laughs> That's what I put on the blog. Because they had an IPO, they released their stock at $10 a share, which is reasonable. $10 a share, people could take advantage of that. But then as soon as they released it, the stock took a dive. <laughs> <laughs> so, you release your stock, and basically it immediately falls. <laughs> Not a good thing. So all the people that bought into the IPO at $10 a share lost money almost immediately. So I'd call that an IPO fail. <laughs> Perhaps even an epic fail. Because, I mean, they make games like Farmville in Facebook. Right. Bunch of sharp coders there, know what I mean? I shouldn't rail on them so much. I mean, I don't care at all about their product. But the IPO fail was, eh, interesting. Okay, next item. <laughs> Have you heard about the Carrier IQ hoo-ha? That's what I call it on the blog again, the Carrier IQ hoo-ha. The hoo-ha, hoo-ha, by the way, is a word that I define as being, uh, meaning, uh, let's see, uh, what, what, what I, how will I define it? I'll define it as a big to-do. Eh, okay. So, Carrier IQ is essentially a component of phones like, for instance, the Android phone. It's actually been on most mobile devices that basically uh, records all your keystrokes. 
for lack of better, and retains them. And then businesses can choose to uh, mine that data, information, uh, for things that might help them know how to sell to you better. Which I'm sure you're thrilled about. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit on the libertarian side. I want freedom for myself and everyone else. And freedom, in this case, would mean freedom from people looking over my shoulder and seeing what I type. Which is pretty much what Carrier IQ does. So, Apple has gotten on its high horse and said, we don't allow Carrier IQ on our devices. Well, they did. Now they've cut it off, as has Sprint. Sprint has cut off at Carrier IQ because of the hoo-ha. See, there's that word again. People are all bent out of shape about it. Now, one of the most bent out of shape is Senator Al Franken, which I have a hard time saying without kind of going, <coughs> because Al Franken is a nut <laughs> and a loon. He's a comedian who went to the Senate. So, you people that voted him in, what were you thinking? Now, in this case, he's on his high horse about the whole carrier IQ thing and, and personal freedom and all that. So, okay, I'm kind of a little bit on his side on this one, but most of the time he's a nut. A loon. That's just my personal opinion. Chalk that up to curmudgeonness. Yes, yes. Yes. So, whatever you think about carrier IQ, Pay attention to it because it will be spoken of again. And personal freedom is what I am all for. So don't what don't look over my shoulder while I'm typing. Besides, you'll see me misspell the all the time. T H E. I keep saying T E H. I don't know why my fingers do that. They do it automatically. I don't even it's not something I do consciously. But I tear everything. Tear this and tear that. Anyway, and that's just, the, that's the word the, okay? Not to mention this and other TH words. What is it about TH? You know, I don't know, but I transpose the letters. I'm sure there's some deep psychological reason. <laughs> anyway, so Carrier IQ now blow! <laughs> yeah. The Geek Software of the Week, Geek Software of the Week this week is for Linux. Now, there's a reason for that. Because I have switched to Linux in my everyday normal human life. <laughs> I'm running Fedora. I should have a Fedora hat. You know, like uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah, that would be cool. Anyway, Fedora Linux is the client version of Linux, the desktop Linux of Red Hat. Okay? And since I support Red Hat at work, you know, as a server administrator, then I decided, well, if I'm going to go with Linux, I'll go with Fedora for my client. And it's awesome. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. However, I'm always trying to tweak and find things that I can do. And this week's Geek Software of the Week is Cairo Doc. Cairo. I'll put it up here on the screen. Cairo is like the city in Egypt, Cairo. Yes. Dash doc, all in lowercase. Cairo dash doc, lowercase. That's the product. If you can call it a product. It's an open source, totally open thing. And it uses OpenGL, which is cool. So anyway, the point is, it gives you a doc. D-O-C-K doc, not doc like Dr. Bill. A doc that will go on your screen, and in my case on the bottom of the screen, to make it look like a Mac, kind of. You know, it does the little cute float over it, and it, the icons grow larger and get smaller as you go off, and you know, that kind of thing. It looks cool. So I put a picture on the blog, I point over here to my computer, on the blog of uh, my desktop. You can see the Starship Enterprise coming at you out of the screen. Yes. And the dock at the bottom. Of the screen and it's cool and I started to do it as like a demo but 
I mean, okay, so I float over it and the icons get bigger and then shrink. I mean, hardly worth a demo. I hit a little thing over here and went kathunk. So, anyway, point is, it's cool. All right. And it's free, of course. Open source, Linux, it's free. And it's really easy in Fedora. My eye is itching. You know, it's really annoying when your eye itches when you're doing a netcast. What can I say? Uh, in Fedora, it's really easy. You just go into the Add Remove Software. I never thought I would be talking about Linux in these terms. Add Remove Software. So you go to Activity, and then Applications, and then Add Remove Software, and type in the search area Cairo-Doc, and it will be one of your options. And you can choose it, and install it, and voila! you'll have Cairo Doc. And you can set it up to automatically come up when the system boots. You can add in icons. You can build your own little groupings. Uh, stuff. Lots of cool stuff. Neat. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Particularly if you're running Linux like I am. Now you might say, well, yeah, but what, what about the Geek Software of the Week for Windows, Dr. Bill? Eh. <laughs> Didn't do one this week. Actually, I considered I considered another launcher for Windows, but I kind of thought maybe that was a little lame. If you want to go check out, this one is called Launchy, as in launch and why, launchy.net. I'll put it up here on the screen. But at any rate, yeah, eh, it was okay. They had a Linux version. They had a Windows version. I thought about kind of doing a double up. It just didn't, it didn't speak to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's what I'm all about here, is sharing with you my own little finds, things that I encounter that's fun. Because I'm all about the tech. So, anyway. So, hopefully you enjoyed this foray into broadcast excellence. <laughs> I can dream. <laughs> and until next time, remember that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.